Hey guys, Mike here from Sasquatch Mon Tactical. I wanted to make a video today about what I believe is the greatest 22 pistol ever made, um, and also the greatest line of 22 pistols ever made. I think there there might be some people that disagree with me, but I think there's a whole lot of people who will agree with me on this one. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the Mark IV 2245 by Ruger is the greatest 22 pistol ever made. I absolutely love this thing. Awesome, awesome gun. So I know I had talked about some of the features on uh, my field review of this gun, and I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth um, now that we're here at my tabletop and we're indoors, and I can talk about some of those things. First of all though, I'm going to talk about this one. So this is the Ruger Standard. Uh, eventually it became known as the Mark I. But I believe this one, let's see if it shows up, it just says 22 long rifle automatic pistol. So this one is just the Ruger Standard. I believe if I remember correctly, this one was manufactured in the late 60s. This right here is the first pistol I ever learned to shoot on. The first gun I ever shot in my whole life was this one. It belonged to my father and I inherited it from him. Uh, hasn't been shot in a while. I haven't shot it since, since he passed away, but uh, this is a very special gun to me. And so this kind of started my whole love for the Ruger Mark series pistols was this one in particular. This one, I also inherited from my father, and this is a, let's see if it shows up. So right there, this is the Mark II Target. So this is a huge uh, 22 pistol, but this thing is awesome, man. I love this. This gun is so much fun. And my dad and I had tons of fun shooting this thing together. Now this one has got obviously a huge barrel on it and a red dot optic. Don't have it turned on, but you can see what that looks like. And then it's got the target grips. So you can see, you know, you got a nice thumb rest there. Um, I, I sometimes shoot it like this with two hands, but you can also just shoot one-handed. It's got a big flared mag well. And then you got you your fingers in there, take the magazine out. Not super practical for speed reloads, obviously, but man, this thing is so fun. And with that red dot on there, I mean, you might as well be shooting a rifle at this point. If you lay this down on a bench rest or brace it against something, I mean, this thing's crazy accurate. I love it. Shot this out to 100 yards, no problem at all. I believe it's a 10 inch barrel, if I'm correct. Big improvement over this one. Uh, this one, obviously it's got a, a smaller barrel, a shorter barrel. Um, and a much, much older. I don't remember when this one was made, but uh, I want to say in the 80s sometime, maybe the late 80s. But this one, like I said, is uh, what I what I think is the best, the best version. So now it's the 2245. So it's got the 45 uh, caliber or kind of the 1911 style grip. You can see the difference in the grip angles. Right, this one's got a much steeper grip angle. This has got what looks like a traditional 1911 grip. And then it's got, so the Mark IV has got ambidextrous safeties. I did remove the ambidextrous, uh, the left-handed safety on this one, which is an option. They give you a little plate that goes in there. So you can just remove that piece. It's got a, the uh, slide lock right there which uh, you, I believe you can also use as a slide release. So you can, on the older, on the all the older versions up to this point, you couldn't release the, you couldn't drop the slide with the slide release. You kind of had to uh, pull it back, I believe. I have, I'll, I'll have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure you had to just kind of rack it on a full magazine. So again, it's got the threaded barrel so it can factory with the threaded barrel, so it'll take take uh, suppressors that are threaded to that thread pitch, which is going to be pretty much all 22 suppressors. 
And then this is the tactical version. So it came with the light rail and the optics rail. So the other cool feature about this one is the barrel is, uh, I want to say 4.1 inches long. I'll have to check the exact specs, but it is specifically this length because at this length, all 22 ammo will stay subsonic through that barrel. So with a suppressor on there, all 22 ammo will be subsonic. So you could run just standard full pressure, uh, full power 22 ammo through this gun and it will remain subsonic through your suppressor. Uh, that's a pretty cool feature if you plan on suppressing it, but also it's just a cool feature in general. So now I've got the Burris Fast Fire 3 on there. Get this thing turned on. Turn the brightness up a little bit. This camera doesn't want to pick up the... There we go. Let's see if I can find that dot in there. There it is. So you can see how that looks through there. I do really like this optic. It's not a super expensive optic either, so that's kind of nice. Pretty affordable. It's very accurate. Easy to function. Sorry, there is the dot. It's kind of hard to find in the camera, but when you when you're holding it and you 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 raise it to your eye, it's it's very natural sight picture. So one of the other cool features that they put on the Mark IV. It's kind of hard to pick up in the video, but this little plunger right there, little spring-loaded plunger, and the way that works is when you insert the magazines, now that plunger is under tension or under pressure, and so when you hit the mag release, it basically ejects the magazine. Now obviously, if you have it tilted down, it'll, it'll drop that magazine, no problem, so it helps in ejecting the magazine. And that's another cool feature. So these are aftermarket G10 grips. I know I mentioned that in my other video. I don't remember the manufacturer, but on Amazon and eBay, there's a bunch of different manufacturers all making G10 grips that are all pretty similar. I want to say they're in the $40 to $50 range and quite a, quite a big selection. So you can find whatever style and color suits you and your preferences and what you like. All right, now let's talk about some ammo. So I got a couple of different types of ammo here. These are all from CCI. Some of the best 22 ammo you can get. These are by far my favorite for, uh, for small game and for hunting and stuff like that. So these are going to be the segmented subsonic. These are 1,050 feet per second and they're segmented, they fragment into three petals and break apart. Now, in 40 grain bullet, these ones, the 1,050 feet per second, will cycle in this gun. So it'll cycle the slide and it does it pretty reliably, which is awesome, uh, and, and I like that, because these, you can, you're not gonna turn your pistol into a bolt action. These, however, so these are very similar, the quiet segmented, 710 feet per second. Um, I believe it's the same side, the same bullet. Let me check here. This is covering it up, but I believe it's the same grain. So 710 feet per second, and these will not cycle the slide. So I've had it happen a couple of times where it does cycle, but it's certainly not reliable. You can't count on that for follow-up shots. So effectively, you're turning your gun into a bolt action. Now these ones, the just the subsonic, so these are, again, 1,050 feet per second. These are just the, the lead nose version of these ones. So these are kind of like the cheap, cheap target, you know, you can see 40 grain. So these would be what you would want to sight in with and practice with. They're a little bit cheaper. These aren't terribly expensive, but they're certainly not cheap. It's not like bulk ammo. And here... Got some loaded in here, so you can see it's copper plated. Hollow point. There's the magazine. Holds 10 rounds. These are awesome. I absolutely love them. 
Uh, I've got another buddy of mine who shoots them all the time, kills a lot of stuff with them, and they work fantastic. Now, I haven't shot either one of these two in either of these guns. I'd imagine that these will work just the same in, uh, in this gun. I probably won't be shooting this for a long time, so I don't really have to worry about that. This is just going to sit for a while. Um, I'm sure that these will still also not cycle in this one. With the different barrel length, I don't know what that's going to do. Um, this summer, I'll probably take this out, and I'm sure I'll put some rounds through this and have some fun with it and try some different stuff out. These ones, without ear protection, are still pretty quiet. Uh, they do have a pop to them, but it's not crazy loud. I wouldn't be shooting them in your backyard. These are even quieter. Uh, I've shot these outside and, and they're, they're surprisingly quiet. They still have a little bit of pop to them, but obviously there's no crack or anything like that. All right, let's talk about takedown. And this is one of the one of the, the biggest features on this gun, I believe, over the last version, the Mark III. So we'll check, check to make sure that it's empty. I can see down in the chamber. It's empty. Now on the old gun, you had a pin back here that you had to pull out. It's a huge, huge ordeal to take the thing down. Really a pain in the butt. A lot of people didn't like it. This is one of the big drawbacks, especially shooting a 22 that's, you know, it's dirty. You, they get gummed up pretty easily. So here's how you take this one down. Back here, you got this little button. You push that. Give it a little tilt. It pops right off. So there's your whole slide. All your internals, your bolt. Basically everything just pulls right out the back. It's super easy. I mean, they, they, I can't believe they didn't design this a lot longer ago. Now, on the newer ones, the, the slides are interchangeable between the 2245 and the Mark IV. So you could take the, basically all the same slides and put them on a different frame if you want to change out the grip angle or whatever. But basically both versions have all the same features, similar mag release, similar slide lock, safety, all that. It's just going to be a different grip angle. I don't know about the magazines. I would assume that the Mark IV does take different magazines because of the grip angle, but I'm not quite sure on that one. So I would, I would guess that that would be a part that's not interchangeable as the magazine. But again, I, I, I'm not positive and I don't have just a regular Mark IV, so, so I'm not sure. Let's put this back together. You just hook that little notch on there. This pin goes in that little hole right there. Snap, back together. Boom, it's done. There's all your, all your cleaning, your takedown, everything. Now you can take this down farther, obviously. Break it down to all the individual components. You know, break down the bolt, all that kind of stuff. If you so choose uh, for cleaning and whatnot, but for if you're not shooting it all that often, you just want to give it a quick once over. That's that's going to be the best the best way to do that. So hopefully at this point, I've convinced you that this is indeed the greatest 22 pistol in the world. Um, you might not agree. I don't know. That's up to you. But in my opinion, the the Ruger Mark IV 2245 is the greatest 22 pistol ever created. And the Ruger Mark series is also the greatest series of 22 pistols ever created. If you disagree with me, go ahead and put comments in the comment section and tell me what your opinion is. Maybe you can sway me. I don't know, man. This pistol is pretty awesome. It'll take a lot to change my mind. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.